Power 72. Dodge speed. My brother from another mother. Welcome everybody to the channel and the tutorial. Thank you for stopping by and checking it out. This is going to be um, how to paint uh, Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat style. You're going to need red, white, black spray paint, paper mask and tape and scissors. Um, depending on you know your materials, uh, you might not need some of that. You might need more. This is our subject matter. It's the, um, 68 Dodge Charger RT Reveal. Um, this is the uh, body we're going to be painting. There again in this tutorial, you can apply this method over any model. Um, you can pretty much do the same pattern over anything you want to do. You can do it over a toolbox. You can even paint your own guitar if you wanted to do like a replica of Eddie's Frankenstrap. Um, so this will apply. And there again, I'm going to use, this is going to be my disclaimer. This is just my opinion and the way I did it. Um, you can do it any way you choose to do it. You can use any materials you choose to use. It reminds me of, the, you know, a Christmas story scene. Uh, you'll poke your eye out, kid. Yeah, so just, you know, exercise caution whatnot. And this is just for entertainment purposes and, uh, I love Eddie Van Halen and rest in peace. And this is just a tribute build to him. So I thought I'd make a how to paint it while I was doing it. This is basically, um, you know, I'm just going to take creative license and, and do it in the spirit of Eddie. So basically that's, you know, what we're doing. We're going to start off with a, a white styrene, naked styrene body. So since I'm actually going to use the white, I don't need white spray paint. Of course, like I said, if you're going to use, it um, doesn't matter if you paint the black first or if you have a black base and then you go with a white coat or if you have a white base and you go with a black coat. Like I say, this is universal and it's reversal. So it doesn't really matter but the way this i'm just laying it down the way i did it there again there's no right or wrong it's just you're trying to get to the end result so basically there's you know i started off you know looking at eddie's guitar of course i've seen it many times but it's always good to look at reference material this is one of you know his most iconic guitars um recognizable guitars uh, and it's, it's actually, um, you know, very uh, simple process uh, the way, you know, Ed did it. So I've kind of did the, the model the same way, same spirit. So there again, you know, there's there's no primer like I didn't. I'm, I'm not using primer. If you want to use primer, use primer. You know, uh, there's no clear coat. I'm not clear coating it. I don't believe Eddie's uh, Frankenstrat was clear coated. But there again, if you want to clear coat yours, you know what? Go get you some clear coat. It's beautiful. It's all relevant. Okay, it's all good. There's no right or wrong. It's just you know, 
This is just my take on it. So, basically, um, I'm starting with a, a white base. So, I'm going to uh, tape tape off the white base and then apply, you know, layers in sequence. So, if you had that, um, if you had a black base, then, you know, you would reverse the sequence, but still the process is the same. So, I wanted, uh, when it came to the um, stripes... I wanted to, you know, be very random with it. So basically, I just took um, my masking tape and I taped it up, and then I got my scissors and just started um, cutting strips. So basically, I'm trying to be as random as I can with these with these uh, stripes. Some of them are going to be thinner. So I'm cutting some thin, I'm cutting some medium, and I'm cutting some thick. But, the, you know, the process is just try to be as random as you can. And then um, when you're masking off the car, you know, you want to try to um, be as random as you can. Be, be as random and natural with the stripes as you can. I was just trying to get like a... Um, a really natural type of uh, paint job. So once you cut some strips, then you you apply the strips on the body, of course, in a random pattern, and then uh, you spray paint your first uh, coat or your first layer. I actually sprayed this. I want to say this is either two or three coats of this gloss black over the first masking. And, um, you know, you just want to get a good, you want to get good coverage. You want to get a good smooth um, finish as, you know, as smooth and as you can. I'm not sanding in between coats. Uh, so I'm, the, the next masking layer is going to go directly over this coat, this finished coat. And then, you know, we're going to paint over the top of that with the next layer. Um, I would allow 24 to 72 hours of dry time, depending on your climate and environment and the paint that you're using. All of this can vary, but general for general purposes, anywhere between 24 and 72 hours, the paint should cure and be good enough to start cutting more stripes. They're again at random lengths and widths and applying them over your fully dried uh, first, you know, first coat. Now, like I said, if you, um, if you're starting out, say if you're starting out with a um, different color body, you got to paint it, you know, white or black before you mask it of course you know the process is the same so we've um masked maxed off the black layer and now we've sprayed our red layer now i just i went with um a certain color red it's not actually red it's called strawberry fields it's a rust-oleum deal at the end of the uh, video i'll show you um, what i actually used but I thought Strawberry Fields, you know, in reference to the Beatles song, I know it had to be influenced by the Beatles, um, you know, as all musicians are. So I thought that was very appropriate. So I used it, and it, it looks good. I mean, it came out great. This is three coats of the rust -Oleum Strawberry Fields high gloss enamel. And then, um, of course, you wait 24, 72 hours, let that cure. Then I'm going to start now in peeling off process. All right, here comes the fun part. Now we're going to... Start demasking 
our uh, body. So this would be the great reveal of the reveal. Dodge Charger. This process is so fun. Try to go extra slow when I'm pulling off uh, each strike because uh, you don't, you really don't, you're not trying to get what they call pull off in the um, painting world. That's when you pull the paint off and you take big chunks of the paint with it, which actually messes up the strike. In this particular paint job, it really wouldn't matter if you had some pull off. Matter of fact, I would believe some natural randomness pull off would actually enhance the overall effect of the Frankenstrat style paint job. That being said, you know, you, you really just want to, you know, take care to pull it off slow. When you're pulling off the, the uh, masking tape, also, I would um, not only go slow, but when you're pulling, I would, um, try to pull it back in an angle to where it's almost kind of rolling back on itself, so to speak. I found that if you pull it back in that kind of rollback angle, that it actually does pull off the lines. The tape pulls off more crisper. You get more crisp lines. Um, on this particular one, since you have two layers of masking, what you're trying to do is you're trying to pull off the last layer first. So basically, what you're trying to do is pull off the 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 second layer that you applied first and then pull off the first layer last so rewind that back if you got confused but basically you you know that's what you're trying to do because you're just you're not trying to pull because if you pull a bottom layer up and hit a top layer of masking, then you kind of run into a problem. You know, you can't pull it all the way off because it's it's kind of like a, you know, it's kind of like a little stoppage there. But normally, if that does happen, you can just grab the stripe that that's holding you up, that's creating the blockage, and then pull it first, and then finish pulling the one the the stripe that you were originally pulling off. I think overall this paint job came out way better than I anticipated it. And um I hope that you get something out of this video and maybe you can one day try to paint um a Frankenstrat style paint job on on something. You know, whether it be um, a guitar, um, a model kit, or you know, like I said, whatever, you know, whatever, a laptop, Xbox console, you know, like the gaming console. I mean, it's, it's so funny, but when it comes to this particular topic, you could paint anything, really. Just find an area of whatever and then have at it. So. This is actually the kind of, you know, this this moment. It's like every stripe that you take off and reveal another portion of the paint job. It's really, really re rewarding. This was actually probably the most rewarding point of the whole process that you go through. You know, is the reveal besides the actual. You know, when once you totally done demasking to the final 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 product but um like i say uh for this particular one we did a naked styrene a uh, white we did not sand the body we didn't scuff it up or anything we just left it bare styrene then we mat we masked the bare styrene and then we went 
with uh, a gloss black which I'm gonna go ahead and read it off it's the quick color fast drying all-purpose spray enamel it's the uh, gloss black it's j2851 I cannot remember where I picked this up at but it could have been at like a department store I would just doesn't really matter like what paint you use um whatever paint you can find i would just use that um if it works it works if it don't you know start over that's that's the best you know, the best way to do it on the um the red layer the rustoleum two times ultra cover this actually says paint and primer in there so maybe there's primer in in the mix of this but you know i was really going for the color it's the ultimate high gloss uh strawberry fields which is uh three two eight three nine five high gloss strawberry fields that's the uh rustoleum number for uh the top coat we used If I would have started with a different color base, I would have just used some random uh, gloss white spray paint to get the white. So, you know, there's that. I mean, you could, I mean, you could use, you could use a flat white as well. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be gloss. Um, I kind of went with the gloss because. Um, I knew I wasn't going to clear coat the project because, like I said, as far as I know, Eddie didn't clear coat the Frankenstrat. You know, he just taped it and sprayed it. So I kind of I wanted to stay in the, the spirit of the actual inspiration, but take creative license where necessary. You know, so the um, delete the deleted you know white paint because i had a white base you know that like i say that was just on this project if it had been a different color i would have painted white could have been flat white gloss white i would have grabbed whatever white i had on hand and just sprayed it and continued with the process so you see the way that i'm pulling back here like I'm rolling the tape upon itself. To me, in in my years of uh, demasking, uh, whether it be full size body panels, uh, or um, even in project model projects, to me, pulling the the masking tape back upon itself like that in that angle. You always, I always got the, the the better, the crisper lines, and I took less of a possibility of pulling the the material off with the paint. I mean, with the tape as I was pulling it off. So, like when I was younger and I did flame jobs, it, it was the same thing when you when you're pulling the masking off. Pull the tape, roll it back on itself, and that steep angle like that. And uh, I always seemed like I got crisper flames when I did it like that. So, when masking it up, I would say just be as random and generic as you possibly can. Um, I'm sure like when Ed painted his, it, you know, it wasn't no exact science. It was just, he was just putting the, you know, he was just masking it off. And, um, the great thing about this particular paint job is I would call it like a, I would call it like a abstract painting technique, you know, almost like a Jackson Pollock type of approach, you know, and it's like, the end result 
is the masterpiece and the beauty of the piece itself. It's not like, you know, a Vincent Van Gogh or some vision and you were trying to paint something specifically. This was way more like an abstract type of approach where, you know, like a Jackson Pollock would just do his style and do his technique and then in that, the, the finished piece would just... And that's kind of the way I approached this particular paint job. It was like, it was heavily Eddie Van Halen, Halen Frankenstrat inspired, but but with a Jackson Pollock type of approach, you know, of just of the randomness of the abstract of the, okay, this is here, this is there. There's no reason for this to be here, but it's here type of thing, you know? And there's no reason for me to paint this white or paint this black or paint this red, but I'm just going to paint it that way because that's the way it is, you know? And then at the end, when you stand back and you look at it, you can kind of appreciate, you know, you can appreciate the piece for what it, you know, what it brings or what do you, what feelings that it evokes in you when you, when you look at it, you know? So, like I said, I want to appreciate everybody watching the video. I hope you learned something from this. We are going to take the piece out into the, um, the sunlight when we get it get all this uh demasking done and show 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 the piece what it actually looks like in natural light you know uh, lighting has a very uh prominent effect on things too so you know depending on your lighting situation things things look very different um off camera than they do on camera Funny enough, you know, um, and that's just with natural filming. Not, I'm not even saying like filtering, because you know, with, you can filter something if you're trying to go for a certain, you know, patina or whatnot. But basically, when you put something out in the sunlight and kind of look at it, in in the natural world, that's kind of what it looks like, you know. So we will take it out in the sun when we get it, after we get it done. If you do, one thing I would add, if you do try to start pulling off this, the, the stripes and like a lot of paint is coming up while you're uh, pulling off the stripes, I would say put the piece back down for 24 more hours maybe 24 48 more hours i don't believe that the paint was fully cured if that happens sometimes as a painter you get so you you get so excited of a, and you want to like rush <laughs> the process but you really can't rush the painting process i mean the material needs time to cure properly in order for you know it to be manageable and i've talked to different painters about this and some painters want to hit pull the tape right before the paint actually dries um because pull off is is less prominent in those situations to them but i've also heard painters say that you know they they want it they want the paint at least, if if it's not a hundred percent cured, let's just say ninety percent cured, to the point where, you know, they experience less pull off when demask dis, demasking. But you know, say when it comes to this type of stuff, you really it's random. It, it it comes down to temperature. It comes down to the quality of the materials that you're working with. Um. Basically, all those factors are going to be different and varying depending on what type of paint you're using, what type of tape you're using. You know, your materials and your tape also does matter. Um, this particular tape is no uh, brand name. It's actually just a regular generic 
type of tape. I don't even think it had a name on it. You would that it would be horrible as far as masking and doing a type of paint job like this. But funny enough, it it was actually a really, really good candidate. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do for this job. So, there again, um, I, as far as the glue on the tape, I would say try to, if you can, try to get something that's less a a adhesive than more for the simple fact that the more adhesive it is, the more you can, you know, pull off big sections and chunks of paint when you're, you know, demasking. As as far as a lighter adhesive, it comes off a lot better and there's not so much pull off. There's so many tapes out on the market and they're all claiming to tape that won't do this or that. So, you know, all I can say is experiment. And, you know, it's kind of a trial and error when it comes to that type of thing. If you find a tape that does what you want it to do, I would say stick with that brand or stick with that tape uh, for those type of paint jobs. So, you know, there's that. And then I guess like I could say with the temperature, the quality of the paint. You know, all these things play a factor. I would, like I said, I was not going to, um, I mean, I could have chose to clear coat this, but sticking with the original inspiration of the Frankenstrat, I, I think it looks exactly the way the guitar looks because it's kind of done in the same style, the same process that Eddie did. I want to say he used uh, bicycle paint for uh, for the guitar. I think he used bicycle paint. But there again, it, you know, who like I say, I'm not I wasn't going for 100% accuracy. I was just going for um inspiration, you know. And of course, I was just going to use the the material that I had on hand. Lucky, luckily for this particular paint job, you know, all the, um, sometimes uh, different solvents and chemicals and paints can, act. and there's, I'm sure there's videos about, you know, you, you can paint this over that, but you can't paint that over this because you get, you know, what they call orange peel or toxic Avenger syndrome. There's all these different things, you know, that can happen when certain paints interact with each other that could screw a paint job up royally. So luckily the products that I used in this particular one they played nice together. <laughs> Which sometimes that doesn't happen. So just be aware if you do just grab stuff off the shelf and you're mixing paints, sometimes it doesn't come out doesn't come out good so be aware of that but this right here is the final demasking of the piece you can see this is just a like I said I'm really really happy with the, the end result I think I achieved what I what I was uh, going for I'm really having a blast building this kit guys so let's take it Let's take it outside and we'll kind of have a um a revealing out in the sun 
see what it looks like. Go ahead and comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Like the video, please. And, um, you know, like I said, this one, this one's for Eddie. We're building this one for Eddie. Has blessed us all with some wonderful, wonderful music. All right, here we are. Out in the sun. Here we are out in the sun. We'll kind of give give us um, a, a walk around, spin around, reveal. Now this right here is after, I'd say three, like 72 hours of dry time. I found these little totes that that you can you know put your body in and cover it up keep dust and insects and stuff from landing on your your work and um you know gives it gives the paint time to cure so this is like 72 hours of cure time and bringing it out in the sun, and you can, I mean, the paint job is just, uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy with this particular piece. So, this is the, the gloss, this is quick color, fast drying, all purpose enamel, like I say, this is the exact, exact paint that I used for the black layer. Then this is the Rust-Oleum High Gloss Strawberry Fields. This is what I used for the top and final coat, which, like I say, it was like three layers. I did like a, a misting, and then I did like a medium, then I did like a final heavy coat. This is the tape, tape that I used, which was just, there's no name on it. It's just um, generic masking tape cut to length and width, you know, and at random. So it, I did, you know, when I was putting the stripes down, I did put down, um, you know, I did mash it down, mash the ends down of the tape and, um, that also helps prevent bleed through. You want to make sure that your tape is, you know, on the panel and secured as best you can. So this is car Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat style. It's been a it's been a wonderful journey. Thank you guys for sharing in it. I want to say uh, peace, love, and happiness to all. I hope some some of you got something out of this. Take what you can take and leave what you can leave. And like I say, like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, Smile my seventy two. Over and out.